race that horse ran. Yes. I'm sorry you didn't win, Mr. Shan. Oh, that's all right, Jeff. We can't all win. And when I don't win, there's nobody I'd rather see win than you. Thanks, Mr. Shan. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been keeping these fingers crossed so long, they stay that way. Is that why your three horses have all beaten mine? I can't understand it. Long enough to know there's nothing wrong with your horses. I don't understand it either. There's something phony about it. Oh, no, no, no. It's just the breaks of the game. But keep it clean, Jeff. It's boys like you that'll do it. Yeah, it's men like you that have already done it. Master Jeff! Master Jeff! Pardon me, Mr. Shan. Mr. Shannon, your niece is at the stable. Martha? Oh, Jeff, I... Oh, he's gone. I wanted Jeff to meet her. Well, so long for the moment, Martha. Betty and I will run along. I must be leaving before your uncle arrives. Why? Have you two had another run-in? No. But my horses have been beaten so often lately, it isn't even funny. <laughs> Poor Uncle Henry. Uh, by the way, Martha, I'd like to propose to you before I leave. Oh, Uncle Lou, you proposed to Martha as soon as we got off the train. Let him have his fun, Betty. We'll see who gets tired first. She loves me not, come Betty, before I show unmanly emotion. <laughs> Uncle Henry. Hello, Angel. <laughs> what cloud did you drop off of? Now, none of your taffy. You were due home at the ranch two weeks ago. Yes, I know, but my horses were running and I had Henry to... Henry Sharon, you care more for your horses than for your only living relative. Now, that isn't so. My horses were running and I and couldn't... And losing, get... as usual. Oh, I can't understand. My entries have been in shape and ready to run. How much I... money have you lost? Well, you got your check, didn't you? Do you need more money? Oh, of course not. No, you've been more than generous. It's the ranch. You're letting it run down. Remember, that's the only home I've ever known. How did you get here? Aren't you due back at the school? Yes, but I wanted to see you. So Betty Stewart wired Lou and he met us at the train. We can stop over till 4 o'clock. Lou Ralston? Is he still proposing to you regularly? Why do you object to lose so much? Is it because his horses are always beating yours? No, it isn't that. It's instinct. Or perhaps it's because he's too old. Maybe just horse sense. The same horse sense you're showing and refusing. Oh, but I can't go on refusing him forever. You'd better, or I'll cut you off without a penny. Oh. Well, I'd hate to lose the ranch. But uh, Lou has more money than we'd know what to do with. Oh, oh you caught me that time. <laughs> <laughs> have you run certified check yet? No, not yet. I can't get him in shape. But in spite of all that, he's still my favorite. Ain't you, old boy? <laughs> Uncle Henry, I think you have a strong maternal instinct. I should have. Bottle feeding you. Of all the stubborn little nuisances I that was I... not. And if that's what you think of me, I'll go back where I'm a priest. No, 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 wait, wait you to meet Jeff Clayton. All right. But remember, you're on your good behavior. All right. <laughs> Come on out, old boy. Let's see what's wrong with you. Well, Sharon lost again. Good work, Baker. You know, I may have to make it tougher on Sharon, much as I hate to do it, but that seems to be about the only thing that'll make Martha stop turning me down. Are you all right, Miss Sharon? <laughs> yes. Is he very bad, Uncle? I'm afraid so. Then you're sure he's all right, Doctor? He's going to live, if that's what you mean. But how well a man he'll be when he leaves here is difficult to say. What's the principal trouble? There's one rib pressing directly on the heart. Any undue excitement, anything that causes the heart to be faster, may prove fatal. You keep the boy here until you feel it's safe for him to leave. I left a check downstairs, and if the bill's any larger, why, just write to my bank. I understand, Mr. Sharon. May I go in? Oh, yes, sir. I feel a lot better about you, Jeff, since I had a little chat with the doctor. So they are going to shoot me? Oh, you'll be as spry as a two-year-old. But it's going to take a little time. So I'll ship your horses with mine and run them regularly. That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Sharon. That's all right, boy. I'm going, Jeff. 
Now that I know you've got nothing to worry about, I'll expect to have you write me before long. Certainly will. Come on, Tuggy. We've got a lot to do before train time. I'm staying, please, sir. Staying? Well, you always have a job with me. You know that, Tuggy. I know, Mr. Sharon. But I reckon I'll kind of stick around here in case Master Jeff needs me. Stay till he gets better, anyhow. It might be for months, Tucky. I'm a pretty good sticker, Master Jeff. Fault, old boy. I had hopes that you were going to help me break my jinx. <laughs> but I'm not blaming you. The sheriff will get him next. No, sir. This is the one horse nobody's going to get. How are you going to stop him? I don't know. But I'll find a way. <laughs> couldn't find a better place. It's the loneliest spot I've ever seen. Yes. Get him out. I'll take him. You wait here. You're a thoroughbred. You have the right to live like a gentleman. There are wild horses out there. Go find them. Maybe your forefathers came from here. fences out there. Learn to kick up your heels again. Learn to run again. Goodbye, old boy. Good luck. That's the last you'll see of him. I sort of wish I could go along with him. Doggone. Sure is great to see your family eating around again, Master Jeff. What's good about it? Still use alive and kick it. Use alive, ain't you? <laughs> you can leave in the kicking. Ruled off the turf for life. Excitement means I'm flirting with a wooden uncle. Docs don't say maybe you get better down in Arizona. Just keep them. I'm afraid that gang's gone on a strike. You're going to work for Mr. Shan now. Yes, I always got a job there. But I'll go to Arizona with you if you'll have me. No, it can't be done. Can you tell Mr. Shan to stop sending me money? My horses haven't won a race since Petro won. It. But Mr. Shan write and see our horses been winning. Yeah, and I wrote and told him he was a kind-hearted old faker. Doesn't he think I read the newspapers? Yes, I'll tell him as soon as I see him. I'll spot you to a ticket. No, sir, I got tickets. Well, goodbye, Tucky. Goodbye. Good luck. 
and keep them fingers crossed. Come on, feet. Here's my two tickets. So get busy and get me going. Where's Mr. Sharon? I... There's something wrong. And it isn't with the horses. Say, is that crack meant for me? When I can prove it, I'll have you and the man that pays you ruled off the turf. Now get out. Howdy, Mr. Sharon. What ducky? Well, well, what's wrong? Your dogs barking? Dead dogs don't bark, Mr. Sharon. And mine's dead right up to the knees. <laughs> well, we'll cure that in a hurry. Sit down. Tell me about Jeff. Marcy Jeff's done gone down to Arizona to see Danny Welch. Doctors say he got to build himself up a bigger chest. Well, nothing wrong with his lungs, is there? No, it's that rib pressing on his heart. How was he looking when you left? Pretty mean, Mr. Sharon, pretty mean. The same old thing, cost of living is going up and the stock market's going down. You know what I mean. Now listen, Jeff, I got you to come out here so you can forget racing and form charts. Why don't you get up and get a little this fresh air into your lungs? You mean well, Danny, but what's the use? Plenty. Now look at me. I'd rather not. Ah, oh, now that's the spirit. You know, you're not the only guy that's been ruled off for life. I know, but you can take it better than I can. No, I can't. I was the same as you are when I first came out. Maybe not quite such a crepe hanger, but I was bad enough. And I didn't have any education, either. All I knew was to ride horses, win races, and when I cracked up, boy, believe me, I was through good and proper. Does your leg bother you any now? No, only around wet weather. We're a fine pair, Danny. Well, could be worse, you know. Tell you what you do. Pick yourself a win in tomorrow's race while I go in and get some lunch ready. Come on. Say, did you read this about Seabiscuit? Did a look at the racing news. I like Spider Boy in the first at Brook Meadows. No, I like Denmore. Well, I'll take Watercrest in the second. Yeah, if he's not carrying too much weight. Say, why didn't you tell me they're holding a race meet at the county fair here? I told you I didn't read the racing news. Liar. Hey, did you smile when you said that? Go on, back to your cooking. Say, what is this thing about the county fair? Danny, Sharon's going to run my horses there, and I wouldn't miss this chance of seeing Sharon. Do you think that leaping tune of yours would take us there and get us back? Now, you listen to me. As long as I'm nursing you, you're not going to go near a racetrack. Oh, yes, I am. I remember what the doctor told you. Yeah, well, I guess I better forget it. Yeah. Mr. Sharon? Hmm? Letter? Oh, Tucky, 
We'll have to have these horses shining like silk before Miss Martha gets here. Sure, Mr. <laughs> Sharon. Mr. Sharon, something wrong? They've taken everything, Tucky. Even the ranch. I'm through. Ain't we gonna race Master Jeff's horses no more? No. Jeff wrote me to sell the horses and take the money on account. I guess I. I'm... What you need is a drink. I'll get you one. Mr. Ralston! Mr. Ralston! What is it? Please, sir. Have you got to do some spare, Mr. Sharon? What's the matter with it? Oh, he's then got bad news. He's clean busted. Well, sure, Tucky. Come on. Hello, Sharon. Tucky tells me you need a drink. Here. Get this down, but don't let yourself get down. No, thank you, Ross. All right. Now, listen. You must let me help. What good are friends if they don't come through when you need them? Well, that's kind of you, Ross, but I brought this on myself. Well, you must think of Martha as well as yourself. Does she know? She knows I've been losing. But she's been getting her check every month. Sharon, don't let her know. It'll break her heart. I'm sending some of my horses and grooms in here right away before she arrives. Now, you must look prosperous. Spruce up. How much money do you need? I don't borrow, officer. I've only spent what was my own. Now, buck up. Your luck is sure to turn. There's a branch bank on the fairgrounds. I'll deposit 10,000 to your credit. After that, we'll figure out how much you need to put you on your feet. No, 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 I won't touch it, so don't do it, Ralston. Hello, Betty. Hello. Welcome home. What are you feeling so happy about? Oh, thinking about you. Better. Just what were you thinking about me? I was wondering if you'd say yes now that you're through college. Uncle Lou, that's no way to propose. I've tried every other conceivable way. I'm sorry, Lou, but at college they taught us uh, strength of character. They taught us how to say no. Mm, I always knew a woman should not go to college. <laughs> Where's Uncle Henry? Over there by that open door. See you later. Uncle Henry! Well, what cloud did you drop off of, Angel? Now, save the sugar for those slow horses of yours. What, you haven't been losing again? Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> no, I'm riding high. Where are all your horses? I, I shipped them off. Before. Now, you're not heading for another track. I came home with Betty, but now we're going to the ranch. Yeah, in a little while, honey. I was just telling Tucky that pretty soon I'll be heading for the ranch. Honest, Ginger? Yes. Yeah. Oh, grand. Now, how about dinner at Betty's tonight? No, no, not tonight. Are you still saying no to Ralston? <laughs> firmly. That's right. Keep on saying it firmly. <laughs> Sit down here a minute. Oh, yes, and put a hundred on Vermont Bell to win in the last race. Okay, Mr. Ralston. Uh, by the way, did you ever collect from Sharon? No. He's been putting me off. Now, don't say anything about it. But I heard he just put ten grand in the bank, so there's your chance to get it. Just so well. Thanks for the tip. Don't mention it. So you stay with Betty a couple of weeks, and then I'll send for you. Now, how does that suit you? Perfectly. <laughs> Hello, Sharon. Hello, Mill. How about your account? In a few days, Bill. No, just a minute. You can stall the feed bills, but best or something else. Give me a check now. You've got money in the bank. I haven't, Milt. All right. You're going to Welsh? I'll take it up to the track officials. Uncle Henry, is, is this true? That you haven't any money? Now, don't you worry, dear. I'll figure this thing out. i tell you what we'll do. We'll sell the ranch and pay off all your debts. The ranch is gone, dear. Gone? The ranch? Oh, you poor old dog. 
Oh, you surprise me, Martha. With my last proposal still ringing in your ears, I hope I find another in your arms. Martha, I tried to help her, but he wouldn't let me. Oh, I don't know what to say, Lou. I don't know what to do. Well, say yes, and we'll get him out of this difficulty. Let's give him a claim on me. Let's keep it in the family. Oh, but don't you see, Lou? I've turned you down so many times. I can't accept you now. Why, that wasn't turning me down. A girl doesn't jump at the first proposal. They all like to keep us dangling for a while. I don't know what to say. Henry, I'm so glad. Well, now, if you're glad, nothing else matters. So run along and be happy. First up, jewelry store ring department. Come on. Nuggy? There goes the thoroughbred. Yes, sir. Mr. Ralston sure is. Who said anything about Mr. Ralston? Uh, yes, boss. Uh, no, sir. If I'd used a heavy hand, she'd have taken the bit between her teeth. What's that, boss? She isn't fooling my old eyes. She's just marrying Ralston for my sake. And I bequeath Jarty to said Martha Sharon, my niece, and to Jefferson Clayton, one three-year-old stallion registered as certified sex. Well, isn't that the horse you tied loose in the hills? Yeah. Why, this is foolish, Hank. Well, foolish or not, that's my will. Signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm dead. I haven't heard you offer any better suggestion. Well, I could suggest something not so crazy. You don't know Martha as well as I do. Nothing short of my death will stop her marrying Ralston. But it's not legal, Hank. It's not even honest. <laughs> now I'm ready to die. I've heard a lawyer object to being dishonest. <laughs> now listen, Zeb. Now if Martha thinks I'm dead, she'll see there's no need to marry Ralston. Then when she gets Jeff Clayton to help her find that horse, why... Well, I'm hoping. Crazy, crazy. By the way, is Tucky in on this too? Oh, no, he'd kill the whole snap. Give it right away. No, that's why I gave him a couple of days vacation to get rid of him. Well, how are you going to manage to live when you're dead? I mean, if this is all the money you get from the auction and it goes to Martha. You're going to stake me, Zap. I'm what? You were fond of Martha too. I'm still fond of her, but where's she stopping? With Ralston's sister and her daughter. You see, Ralston's niece is Martha's bosom friend. That's the trouble. Well, why are you so set against this fellow Ralston? Well, I can't prove it, Zeb. I wish I could, but I got an idea it's no good. Now, you send this telegram. Now, don't get excited when I show you what I told you about last night. There he is over there. Danny, that's a thoroughbred if I ever saw one. Yeah, that's what I thought. But now, how the heck did he get in there? I don't know, but I'm going to get that horse. Better not advertise it. Here comes Collins. Well, howdy, boys. You aiming to be cowhands now? I would like the feel of a horse under me again at that. Well, you can have any one of them hides in there for 30 or 40 dollars, and I'll throw in a halter. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hello, oh, boy. fella. Well, steady. steady, boy. Hey, that horse ain't no cow pony. Well, here's your money, Collins. Well, maybe I better think this deal over, boys. Oh, but you said. I said hide. And to me, it looks like crow bait. And to me, it looks like something I should keep. And it looks to me as if you're hedging on a deal, Collins. In horse trading, you always hedge. 
Well, I could pay a little more, but it's still just a range horse. Well, just the same. I'm going to take this one and lock him in the barn, put him in a stall. Double crossed us. I guess anything goes in horse trading, Danny. I'm glad you mentioned that. Listen, you go on down to the barn and I'll meet you there a little later. I want to see Mrs. Collins. Well, what's the idea? You'll find out. But you try to make a deal with Collins. All right. Well, now look, Collins, you know that nobody's going to turn a good horse loose. There must have been something wrong with him. Perhaps he's all right now and perhaps he isn't. Well, that's the chances I'm taking. All right, I'll go the limit. Fifty. No. No sale. That horse isn't for sale. Well, Jeff, maybe I've got more horses than I need. And I can let you have that one. That is, if you're set on it. It's a deal. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's lame. Well, sure. You said he was liable to go lame. Well... Boy, what a sucker I've been. Pipe down, will you? He'll be all right again. You didn't hurt him, did you, Danny? Now, you know better than that. That's one thing I've never done and never will do. He just knows there's something there and he won't put his foot down. It's just an old trick I picked up from an old Indian horse trader. There you are, Jeff. There's your bill of sale. Thanks. That's all, Martha. Then everything concerned with the estate is settled now. Everything. I've managed to pick up the odds and ends, and I'm happy to tell you there's enough cash to carry you for a little while. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Now about certified check and Mr. Clayton. <laughs> that is absolute foolishness. If that horse isn't dead by now, he's most likely being ridden around the range by some cowhand. Just the same, it was Uncle's wish. If you insist on this wild goose chase, then let Clayton do half the hunting for his half of the horse. Well, how do you plan on getting there? The creditors overlooked an old truck at the ranch. I can drive there. <laughs> Kind of unexpected. Ain't nobody home. Mr. Clayton doesn't exactly live in a palace, does he? Hasn't he got any money, Tucky? Money, I reckon, is what he has everything else but. <laughs> Miss Martha, look here. Oh boy, ain't he a beauty? I thought you said Mr. Clayton was all through with racehorses. I thought so, too. Why, certified check. You sure, Miss Martha? Of course I'm sure. Look, here's his picture. Our search is over before it started. But how did Martha Jeff find it? Did he know certified check? He wasn't much in Mr. Sharon's stable, ma'am. And I never saw this horse run. No, Uncle never raced him. He was always lame. He sure enough looks all right now, ma'am. They's getting this horse ready to run, if you ask me. Listen, Tucky. Well, this is certified check. Don't say anything about Uncle's will. This way, and 
I wanted to thank you in person. How very sorry I am for that accident. Well, you said all that in your letter, and I begged you to... How your uncle would have felt if anything had happened to you. You were very... weren't you? And he was just as fond of you. Was? Didn't you know he was dead? No. I'm, I'm very, very sorry, Miss Sharon. He left you this. had to leave. Yes, sir, Tucker, you ain't never seen a horse like this in your life. Come on, I'm gonna show him to you. Boy, he's a honey. Miss Sharon, this is Danny Welch. How are you? You've met Tucky, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, Danny's known me for a long time, Miss Martha. I remember the time he went down with the whole field atop of him. But he'll be able to ride again as long as we stay in the Southwest. Oh, are you going to run horses again? Well, we've just been to town, seeing what we could raise in the way of money. We're gonna run our horses some races. Well, that is small meets and county fairs, you know. You must think he's good. Well, take a look for yourself. That horse is as smooth as music and moonlight. You can do everything with that horse but stop him. Where'd you get him? Well, that's quite a story. A rancher corralled him with some of his range horses. And with an old horse trading trick I know, we bought him for a song. Got a jockey, a handler, and a trainer. Danny's got a little car and I've got a little money. With that, we ought to get started. And I have the truck in which we could transport the horse. We? That's what I said. But, uh... I think that's what Uncle would have liked me to do. Yeah, well, you'd look well gypsying around the country with that ring on your finger. Besides, wouldn't your fiancé object? He probably would. You must know Lou Ralston. Lou Ralston? Oh. Uh, say, Jeff, that old truck would just solve our problem. Well, I guess you win. Tucky, lead him out so I can take a good look at him. Yes, ma'am. Jeff, we gotta do something. Well, what's worrying you? When I was riding for Sharon, Baker tried to get me to throw a race. Oh, well, what's that got to do with us? Baker? Wait a minute. Isn't he Ralston's trainer? That's what I'm getting at. Why didn't you tell me this before? She wasn't in the picture before. Besides, there's just some things we don't talk about. You don't think that spill of mine was an accident, do you? So that's why Sharon was losing all the time. Okay, Danny, but don't say anything to her. Would you do me one more favor? Anytime. Uncle Henry had a horse. It would be about the age of this one now. And I wondered if you'd call it certified check in remembrance of him. And listen, Mr. Clayton, I know I can get the jockey club to issue you an entry form. Mr. Webster, one of the jockey directors, was Uncle Henry's best friend. He's known me all my life. Miss Sharon, if you can do that, he's not only certified check, but we'll race him in the Sharon colors. It's done. How? Oh. Now, no questions. It's a promise. We'll trust to the Clayton luck. A certified check could bounce. Why complain? We got him for practically nothing. Even trade. The horse is practically nothing, too. Going to quit? Quit? Huh, we haven't even started yet. That's no lie. <laughs> well, anyhow, I'm happy for one thing. With all the excitement, and I was plenty excited, my heart didn't bother me at all. I felt swell being back again, too. Even though the other jocks did give me a razz for my ride. And for some reason or other, I'm happy too. <laughs> Come on, man. 
on the outside. Well, I'll admit it's got me licked. It's a mystery to me. On the track, he's the fastest thing I've ever ridden. But in every race, he does the same darn thing. Maybe another race or two and he'll settle down. I don't know. I'm afraid there's not much use trying anymore. How's the money holding out? Kind of low. Then you'll have to let me help some more. No, I won't. You put in as much as I have already. We'll give him one more chance. If he doesn't win the next race, we'll call it quits. I'll get a job and you'll marry Ralston. When are you going to tell me what the will is between you two? Oh, forget it. It doesn't make any difference. All right. Well, me for the truck and some beauty sleep. As if you needed beautifying. I must, if it's taken me this long to get a compliment out of you. Well, I guess we could all turn in and get some sleep now. Nobody be suckered up to hurt horse. Okay. Yes, sir. Who's calling me? I am the ghost of Henry Sharon. Master Jeff! Master Jeff! Master! I hate! I hate him, Mr. Sharon! What are you talking about? He called me Tucky, and when I asked him his car, and he said, this is the ghost of Mr. Sharon. what did he look like? Did he wear a sheet? This ain't no time to be fooling, Master Jeff. I didn't see him, just heard him. But it was his voice, all right. <laughs> I think you've been hearing things. Tucky, be your age. There ain't no such things as ghosts. You know that. Yes, sir, I know that. And you know that. But he, does he know that? <laughs> now run along. Nobody was ever hurt by a ghost. Yes, I hope you're right. He thinks he heard a voice. <laughs> Tucky, don't be afraid. Oh, oh, please make Mr. Shan go back to his grave. Listen, Tucky. I have a message for Mr. Jeff. Tell him when he races certified check to keep him off the rail. Keep him in the middle of the track. You hear? Answer me, Tucky. Master Jeff! Master Jeff! Now, don't tell me you've been hearing ghostly voices again. I did, Master Jeff. Cross my heart and hope to die. What did he say this time? He said when you raise certified check to keep him away from the rail and in the middle of the track. What? What? Say, listen, what are you trying to pull? Now listen, Tucky, you've been suffering from chills and fevers again. Now go on back to the stable and cover your head up with a blanket. No, sir, Master Jeff, I ain't going back to that stable. I was going to sit around the fire with you all. What'd you find out? Nothing much, except they're about broke. Why do they keep entering a horse that quits all the time? I don't know, there's something phony. It's a build-up for a come-on. That's why they always exercise away from the track. Well, we'll get up early in the morning and follow them. We'll see you at the hotel later. All right. Well, I guess we've beaten all the early birds. I'll say even the worms. Master Jeff, you gonna try what Mr. Sharon's ghost told me? Tucky, that was all right last night. But this is morning. You'd better be careful, Master Jeff. It's bad luck not to mind a ghost. I've had predominations like that before, and they come true. All right, Tucky, if it'll make you happy, we'll give your ghost a break. Say, Jeff, that may be a hunch. I mean, we've tried everything else. What have we got to lose? Uh, you too? Come on, let's go. So, they're working out on the track this morning. Well, it's a good thing we got up early, Del. Now, after getting up in the middle of the night, I hope we find out something. We 
found the answer. You see, Master Jeff, my predomination came true. I forgot. What's your predomination for the first race today? I don't know. I ain't got it yet. When you get it, be sure and let me know. Yes, sir. How fast did he work? I'm afraid to look. Time. Say, that's a track record. Well, everything's all right there. Master Jeff, you's killing me. It's a good thing there are no touts around. No wonder they've been pulling those phony starts. It's a build-up for the San Anita handicap. Well, you can sketch your entry right now. Not mine, Adele, but theirs. Do you really think your horse can win the Santa Anita handicap, Jeff? Yeah, I got a hunch he can. Are you always going to remain in this... this business? As long as I've got a horse. But you're never sure of anything, Jeff. Danny, see if you can make out what that sign says over there. Los Angeles, 184 miles. I thought that's what the last sign said. You're doing well even to keep up with Los Angeles. <laughs> That'd be funny if this truck weren't running on its nerve. I knew I shouldn't have said that. Well, is it anything we can fix this time? Nothing short of a new motor, Danny. A connecting rod right through the crankcase. What are we going to do now? That's going to cost plenty. Oh, no, it's not. We've spent all we're going to on repairs. We've got just enough left for an entry fee. Well, a lot of good an entry fee is going to do us if we can't get there. We started for Santa Anita, and we're going to get there if we have to walk. When do we start? You'll take the bus. I go as the rest go. Well, we can walk all right, Jeff, but what about the horse? Certified check is no parlor bedroom and bath thoroughbred. He's a range horse. He'll be all right so long as we keep him off the pavement. She's right, Danny. He can stand it. Come on, let's go. Get him off there, Tucky. So this is the sport of kings. Let me carry your bag, Martha. Uh -uh. I'll carry it myself till I pass out. I don't think that'll be very long. Well, I think it'll do us a lot of good if we all stop and get a little rest. That's a good idea. I was feeling like this when I caught up with Mr. Sharon. He says, what's the matter, Tucky? Your dog's barking? And I says, Mr. Sharon, dead dogs don't bark. No doubt he's up there rooting for us but I'll bet he'd rather be down here with us. No, oh, ma'am, I wouldn't say that. I reckon Mr. Sharon wasn't so happy. Well, why do you say that, Tucky? The last time I saw him, he was quite cheerful. He wasn't at home, he was going by Mr. Ralston. He said, Tucky, she ain't fooling my old eyes. She's doing this for me, sacrificing herself for an old man. What else did he say? Begging your pardon, Miss Martha. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but he was awful set on you man, Marcia Jeff. But he says if I use a heavy hand, she'll take the bit in her teeth. So that's it. Very well rehearsed. Well, you tell Mr. Clayton I still have the bit in my teeth. Oh, Martha, you're absolutely wrong. Say, Jeff, she just said she has the bit in her teeth, didn't she? Well, let her cool off. Can I give you a lift, lady? Did you see that horse back there? Yeah. We're trying to get to Santa Anita. Walking? Yes, unless you give us a ride part of the way. The horse, too? Sure. <laughs> I've picked up many a hitchhiker, but never a horse before. <laughs> Can it be done? You mean... Uh, Put the horse in with me furniture? Uh-huh. What do you take me for, lady, huh? Well, why not? A horse has four legs, so is a piece of furniture. Well, what difference does it make whether it's Clydesdale or Chippendale? I don't know what you're talking about, but the answer is no. Well, there's uh, lots more money in picking horses than in packing pianos. Yeah, but packing pianos is much easier. <laughs> 
Well, maybe for you. Not for me. Is that so? Say, who do you think's going to win the Santa Anita? Oh, so you do follow the races? Yeah, I followed them, but so far I'm way behind. Oh, look, that horse is the greatest long shot you ever saw. Mm -mm. You can make the cleaning of your life. Ah. That is, if we get him to Santa Anita. Mm -hmm. A horse hitchhiker. <laughs> That's a new one on me. <laughs> Wait a minute, I got a hunch, lady. Come on, hop in and I'll back up. Come. Hey, Jeff, look, they're coming back. All right, boys, give us a hand with this tailgate. You've picked yourself a ride. Horse and all. Nice. Come on, get over there. And you did this believing that I told Tucky to say all those things? What else was I to believe? I swear, it's the first I ever heard about it. But I think it's about time I told you this. When Danny was riding for your uncle, Ralston tried to bribe him to pull up a horse. And believe me, Danny's injury was no accident. You mean that Danny was ridden down purposely? I do. So that's what Lou was afraid you'd tell me. Oh, Jeff, we have to beat Lou Ralston's entry. We just have to. He's putting everything he's got on it to win. Certified check must be. Don't worry, he will. Climb in, we're all ready. All right. I lost plenty here. Well, don't worry. You'll get it all back and plenty more. I'll make the arrangements for a stall. Wait a minute. Good. I hope that horse of yours can run. Luck is still with us, Baker. Certainly is. For a while, though, I thought we'd lost them. They'll find out where they stabled their horse. Okay. Any luck, Jeff? There's not a vacant stall left. Oh, Jeff. That settles it. Me and the van stays. Well, but what about your load of furniture? Oh, the furniture ain't going to be due till tomorrow. When is the big race? Three weeks from tomorrow. Oh, three weeks. Hmm. The hunch is still good. Me and the furniture is going to be three weeks late. Oh, Mike, you're a real pal. Well, we can't leave the van here in the road. We've got to find a new location. Come on, let's go. Okay. Tucky? Looks like happy days are here again. I'll see. They parked a van in the field across from the track. Are they keeping the horse in the van? It isn't going to be so easy for you to get at him. I wouldn't worry about that. Well, of course, if... Martha! Why, hello, Lou. So you got here ahead of mm -hmm. us. How are you, Mr. Baker? Fine, Miss Sharon. And how's your horse? Well, how can I tell when he's never even finished a race? I wish you could persuade Mr. Clayton not to enter him. Oh, he won't listen to me. But I'm sure Dell will do his best. I sure will. Martha, when will this fancied obligation to Clayton be over? You mustn't forget we're still engaged. Not for a moment. After the big race, I think I'll name the day. You know, I can't quite make it out. It's evident Miss Sharon does not intend giving me up, yet she's playing Clayton's game, thinking I'm blind. Well, why don't you bring it to a head and call for a showdown. No, that would be too difficult. I'll play their way until you can get at their horse. Two weeks ago, our furniture was supposed to get here. Who are you? Oh, I'm Henry Knox, and this is Helen Smith. Oh, Henry. Oh, I, I, I mean, Mrs. Smith, uh, Mrs. Knox. Well, 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 how are you going to set up housekeeping when your furniture doesn't arrive? Look, I'm Joe Papapopoulos, the owner of this business. And not only would I like very much to know where is your furniture, but I would also like very much to know where is my van. 
and that dumb driver, Mike Clorins. Now, what do you think of that? It's a regular mystery. Yeah, ain't it? I'll fix him. I know a fellow which I think might help. Come. There's your van, Joe. That's it. Now I'll show you. And maybe I'll have some business for you, too. Come. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Henry, look! Hay and our piano! <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the funniest thing about the horse. He won't eat his hay anywhere except out of the piano. <laughs> horse? What horse? Why, uh, 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 pardon me. Look. I'm going to commit the salt and batteries on you, Mike, and then I'm going to... You are not going to do anything to Mike. Ladies, do not interrupt. So you are no lady, and I will not tip my hat. Don't you dare touch Mike. Young woman, if you don't stop, I'm going to stand you on your head in the corner of that van and leave you. And how would you like to get out of that? What are you doing here? Well, I, I was just... I was driving the truck along when this young lady here said, uh... Is this the boss? Yeah. How would all you people like to make a pile of money? Money? Show me. You see that? That's a track record for the Santa Anita Handicap. That's right, Joe. Now, so what? Our horse is going to beat that time. All of you bet on him a week from today. Gambling? Well, it's a sure thing and a long shot. Show me. Tonight, I'll show you. Not now. Everyone thinks our horse can't run, and we want him to go right on thinking that. That's why we run him undercover. Now, what do you say? Well, we'll see. I've been shown. You need that van, Jeff? It's the only place we have to keep the horse. You keep it. But our furniture! I've been shown. I'll get you some new furniture. Will the horse really win? He will, unless somebody saws off all four of his legs. In that case, I think I'll stick around to protect him. But listen, you can't say anything about it. If you do, our chances of cleaning up will be ruined. Ooh, but isn't that cheating? If somebody tells, I'll show them. Come. I'm staying right here. Good night, Jeff. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, all's well that ends well. But we haven't beaten Lou's entry yet. Jeff, I didn't know I could be so vengeful. You're still wearing that ring. Yes, and I'm going to keep right on wearing it until the day of the big race. And then I'm going to pawn it and put every cent on certified check. Well, I'd hate to ever have you get that mad at me. Now you know the kind of woman you're falling in love with. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Miss Martha sure is happy about something. And I bet my first guess would be right. Uh, uh, Tucky? Uh, yes, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> Hello, Clayton. What do you want? Oh, I came to tell you something that might interest you. You think you own certified check, but you don't. It belongs to Martha Sharon. What are you talking about? I know. You got him from the rain, sure, but Sharon turned him loose and willed him to Martha. Even registered that horse in the name he carries now. Well, Martha's playing you for a fool. Oh, you don't have to believe me. You can ask her. Ask her about the letter and the paper she filed with the jockey club and the stewards at Tanferen. And if you think for a moment that the jockey club or the stewards would accept the entry of an unknown horse, why, you're more gullible than I thought you were.
Kentucky. Yes, Master Jeff? Doggone, Master Jeff. Is us in bad luck again? You were with Miss Martha when she first came to Danny's shack. Did she recognize certified check immediately? Oh, sure, Master Jeff. You can't fool Miss Martha on a horse, but she had a picture of him, too. So Mr. Sharon left her a picture as well? Yes, sir, Master. Oh. She told you not to tell. Yes, sir, Master Jeff. Mr. Papa, Mr. Papa, Papa, look at this. Just a moment, please. I will call you back and tell you what I think of you. Now I got more troubles of my own. What has happened? Look, it says here the certified check should never have been entered. It says he never finished a race in his life. It says he ought to be pulling a junk wagon. So what? So what? We bet our money on your advice and now we've lost it. And what about our furniture? We want it immediately. But lady, I gave them my word they could have the van. And you gave me your word they could have the furniture. Well, well, yeah, but we, we don't... Well, but they're cheats, and we want our furniture immediately. My friends are not cheats. And if the newspapers think that certified check should be in a junk wagon, that is their business. Th then you really think he can win? I've been shown. Th then our money isn't lost? But what about our furniture? Mr. Papa Papalus. Now what is it? We were wondering, could you lend us some money on our furniture? You, uh, you're not thinking of doing anything foolish with it, are you? Well, certainly not. What odds can we get? What's the matter, Mike? Anything wrong? Uh, you know, what I can't understand is, What's the difference between Clydesdale and Chipperdale? Why, uh, well, ask Jeff. Say, Jeff, what's the difference between Clydesdale and Chippendale? Oh, Clydesdale's a four-year-old and Chippendale's a two-year-old. Ha! That's right, I never thought of that. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> Say, Jeff, Kentucky said he heard somebody over in the bushes. I've been watching. We'll trap him tonight and I've got a good hunch who it is. Well, if you know, tell me. I'll take care of them. No proof, but we'll get plenty of proof tonight. We're probably being watched right now. Tucky, you go and hide behind certified check and keep your eye on him. Now, use your head. Come on, boys. We're going to take a walk. told me to use my head, Master Jeff, and I did, on Mr. Baker's stomach. I'll handle this, oh, please. No, no, I've got something better than that. Danny, play the same trick that you played on Collins. Say, Jeff, this guy's coming, too. That's all right. If he wants to run a little while, let him go. After what he tried to do? It's all right. Let him go. What happened? How did I get here? The horse must have kicked you. Hey, Jeff! Jeff, the horse has been hurt. He's lame. I want Baker away from here. He'll go and tell Ralston our horse is lame. Oh, but Jeff, what good is a lame horse? A lame horse is safe. And in the day of the race, he'll be well again. You're, you're talking in riddles. It just don't make sense. I, I don't know what I don't know what it's all about. Clipperdale, Clydesdale, lame horse today. Oh no, you got me. I think I'll take me van and go home. Well, you can see for yourself that the near hind leg is crippled. <laughs> that horse won't run in any handicap. Mm, very nice work, Baker. That was the only horse I was afraid of. And now I can bet my shirt in safety. <laughs> and a hundred thousand in prize money. <laughs> Back in time. 
I had to get identification and all kinds of red tape. But I got $2,300. I better not bet it all myself. We'll divide it. Well, I can't go. You better hurry and get it on the horse. All right, come on, boys. We're all in this, Danny. Good luck. Well, it won't be long. Jeff, that money's as good as in your pocket. You're not riding for me, Danny. You're riding for old man Sharon. Remember that. I'll remember. Oh, and to be sure you keep him well away from the rail, have him act up at the barrier so he'll start you on the outside. I get it. Let's go. Say, I thought you said Clayton's entry was going to be scratched. Listen, as far as you're concerned, the entry might as well be scratched. I know. You're coming home a winner, Danny. Listen, when he's like this, you know anyone else can do anything with him. Take him to the outside. Certified check has been taken to the outside and will break from an outside post position. There they go! Its special favorite going to the front on the rail, Amber Light is second. Indian Shawl is third, and certified check is fourth. Ralston's Field Marshal is moving up on the outside very fast. Around the clubhouse turn. It's special favor going to the front on the rail. Amber Light is second. Indian Shawl is third. And Parabola. Here comes her by check on the outside. Oh, Get on, Lou. Down the back stretch. A special favor in front by one length. Amber Light is second by two lengths. Indian Shawl is third. They're turning for home now. And uh, Field Marshal got through on the rail and is going to the front. Certified check is second on the outside. It's Field Marshal on the rail by and Nick and Certified Check on the outside. It's Field Marshal. Here comes Certified Check on the outside. It's, they're coming down the stretch. It's Field Marshal and Certified Check head and head. Now they're also the part. They're coming down to the line of finish. And uh, it's Certified Check the winner by a head on the outside. Well, come on, I want to see the guy that gives you real money for these tickets. Come on. Come on. Maybe you should have picked the wrong one that time, Lou. La di look at me. I'm no ghost. Oh, Mr. Sharon! Mr. Sharon! Tucky, what's the matter? <laughs> now you're going to ask me what out I don't know for. Uncle Henry. <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't understand. I had to do it, dear, for your sake. But what? I'll explain it all to you. Where's Jeff? I don't know. Oh, he must still be at the track. I've got something to do there, too. Let's go and find him. So you give her the check and don't tell her I've gone. That's what you want, you know what you're doing. Goodbye, Danny. So long, Jeff. Danny has the check, Martha. I've endorsed it to you. Jeff, my boy. So you're Tucky's ghost. <laughs> oh, I always knew you were an old faker. <laughs> What does this mean? Well, it's your horse, isn't it? No more than yours. What are you two talking about? I willed him to both of you. Did Ralston know that? Yes, I told him. Well, you needn't concern yourself about Ralston anymore. I've attended to him, Baker. Oh, 
What have you done? Well, it isn't so much what I've done as what the Racing Commission and the police are going to do. Jeff, did Lou tell you you had no share in the horse? Yes, he did. But I wanted you to have full ownership. The horse or, or you? Well, both. Jeff, what are you waiting for? 